Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you wouldn't know what is about to happen in the studio right now. Now, um, I have the man who has dedicated his life to documenting the trajectory, the journey, the, the rudiment, everything about Afrobeat. When it comes to um, inspiration, point of reference, anything related to Afrobeat in the diaspora and in Nigeria, his name will be mentioned. Now, he engineers conversation. He spearhead conversation. He's a thought leader. He's the energy god. And ladies and gentlemen, oh, you people don't know that. I have the Afrobeat CNN. When I say Afrobeat CNN, you know, say anything Afrobeat, whether international, local, international, it rest on his ties. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have in the studio here with me, Adesope, a.k.a. Shop <laughs> My brother. My brother. Welcome. I appreciate it, man. Welcome to the country. Listen, I, I always love coming to Ghana, mm. you know. Um, I've heard, I always come in December, mm. but people tell me, come in Easter is a little bit more chill, okay. you know, so you can at least enjoy yourself a little bit more without mm. the stress. Mm. My brother, it's become the same thing. Oh. Okay. Easter is packed. Packed, right? Traffic okay. mm. is jammed. <laughs> places are crazy. People, they're still doing the same thing. Mm. Trying to go to six, seven, eight places in one night. Mm. You know, but I, I think it just speaks to the quality that Ghana presents okay. everybody else. Okay. Um, whether you're Ghanaian or you're not. Mm. We're starting to see Ghana as the go-to place. Mm for just a little bit of, just feel like you're home mm. and then connecting with a variety of people and mixing with the culture, okay. you know. So that's why I'm here and I, yeah. I, you know, I appreciate the love and support always. It's always a pleasure to sit with you. Thanks it's so interesting much. when you said that uh, documenting everything Afrobeats. Yeah. They want to extinct the word Afrobeats now. Oh, no, no. <laughs> we, will, we will get into that. I don't know what is happening, but people are trying to sway. People are trying to chat to their own part. People yeah. are creating new journeys yeah. uh, in, uh, in or from Afrobeat, yeah, a whole yeah. lot of conversation. Yeah. But are you having fun in Ghana, though? Of course. Mm. Listen, man, I love it. I'm here supporting my brothers from Adult Nation. They're okay. celebrating an incredible birthday for, mm. for my brother, uh, SA. Okay. And apart from that, you know, any opportunity for me to come here yeah. just to be in the essence mm. of the culture, mix mm. with my people, people like yourself, mm. I jump at it. Okay. Because I, I, I said just before we started yeah. the interview, it's important for people like us to go beyond borders mm. um, and and start to really understand mm. being African without a border. Mm. Remember, we were born into these borders, yes. these borders that was created by the Westerners during mm. colonization. If not, it would have been a whole, probably a whole continent African with Union. just different yeah. languages when you get to this area. Because if you look back before colonization, you know, you had the Ashanti region, you had, you know, the Benin region, the empire, you had all these empires yes. that were moving within Africa. Yeah. There was no problem. Mm. But they, they all they need... They came our people. <laughs> and we are here now. So we need to now start doing that again. Mm. We need mm. to start going to these places, connecting with different powers and mm. people, mm. and really just stretching ourselves beyond, especially with what, you know, the music has done for us. Okay. The okay. music has opened the doors. Mm. You have know. you tried any of our delicacies? Uh, to this time, mm. I haven't yet, but I was just speaking to my brother, Kizzy, mm. that once we finish with you, mm. we're going to go and find something to eat. Me, when I come, mm. it is important I have fufu and light soup. Fufu and light soup. That, that one is a staple. You don't go there, Jollof way. Jollof, listen, you know, the Jollof conversation, I've said it, <laughs> and I got in trouble because I chose the Ghanaian jollof, mm. but I broke it down. You know, I think what you guys do here mm. with jollof rice, especially where I eat it, okay. is where in Nigeria, we have something called party jollof. Party jollof, okay. Party jollof is cooked differently. The one that smoke the mm. inside. Okay. But that's what I ate on the street here. Okay. So that's like normal jollof here. Okay. So that's a cheat code already. Mm. So you we know, are above the Nigeria. Uh, come on, man. Yeah, but Senegal is above Ghana. No problem. So long as we are above Nigeria <laughs> with the Jollof, we are good. All right. So now let's let's enter straight into Afrobeat. Now yes. for someone who has dedicated your life into yes. documenting Afrobeat, yes. looking at what is happening. Yes. What is the state of Afrobeat right now as we speak? I think Afrobeat is, is strong. Mm. It's vibrant. I think Afrobeat mm. is in an incredible place. Mm. Um, we have Afrobeats to thank mm. for where we are 
as a people today. Mm. Mm. What, the, what the sacrifices a lot of musicians, producers, and video directors have made over the last 15 to 20 years, yeah. almost kind of supporting and creating a genre mm. and giving us an identity. Yeah. Um, we have to be proud of that. Cool. It's gone beyond just music. Mm. Now Afrobeats is a culture. Mm. Now we're talking jollof rice. Mm. Now we're talking wahala. Mm. Now we're talking fashion. Is, fashion. Yeah. It is under the umbrella of Afrobeats. Yeah. Yes, we already know what the original Afrobeats sound is. Mm. We know what Fela and you know his entity had mm. created initially. Mm. But when we came into the 2000s, mm. Afrobeats, wherever, whatever anybody wanted to say, how did it come from the UK or whatever, People were trying to find a name that gave Afropop music an umbrella, made it easy for DJs to recognize and also become an identification mm. for people to understand African pop music. Mm. And somehow, Afrobeats came between 2004 and 2007. Mm. We've carried that umbrella, we've carried that name to be able to break down doors. Mm. We have the Afrobeats chart in the UK, we yeah. have the Afrobeats chart in America, yes. we have now, Apple Music and Spotify have incredible Afrobeats uh, playlists mm. that our music came under mm. to be able to give us a larger audience. Now, we are in the international space okay. and people are able to come and say they love Afrobeats music. I, mm. I talk, you know, a couple of years ago when this conversation was starting to erupt, I mm. said, for a lot of us in Africa and around the world, yeah. when Bob Marley and the likes came with reggae music, mm. And, and reggae became very popular. At a point, a lot of sounds coming from the Caribbean at that time would have been deemed to be reggae mm. because, you know, the largest face of Caribbean music was the great icon in Bob Marley. Bob Marley. But fast forward to years afterwards, people started to understand there's soca, there's calypso, there's dancehall, there's this and that. Mm. But reggae is still, it's still the reggae mm. album charts in America. That's where a lot of people will fall under, mm. you know. And I think that's the same thing with Afrobeats. We see what's happening with people trying to chart their yes. own. Yes, let's get path. let's get to that space where yeah. people are trying to chart their own path. Yeah, Afro this, Afro that. Yeah. But then there's Afrobeat. People yeah. are even saying that we shouldn't associate Afrobeat with their craft. Yeah. But then Afrobeat will still be Afrobeat. Yes, the sound that. The people who are saying that they shouldn't, they can't be identified with Afrobeats. They yeah. create sounds and it's Afrobeats. Absolutely. You, you, you feel you the element. You the percussion. Yes. So what is the issue? And these segmentations and divisions and yeah. swaying, is it going to have any implication on the long-lasting legacy of Afrobeats? So Afrobeat? one of the implications it will have yeah. is if people like myself or yourself and other people around the world mm. keep quiet and agree Okay. That the term Afrobeats has no longer has a place. Mm. A lot of us don't. Mm. Um, we know that Afrobeats is why we're here. Mm. We know what Afrobeats is. Yes. I don't care if you can make R and B music. Beyonce just dropped a, 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 a country yeah, music, country album, yeah. country album. Yeah. But Beyonce mm. is an R and B star from the scratch. That is who yeah, she is. She but she has now cultivated a situation where she told the entire world that I'm about to drop a country album. Yeah. And her fan was like, yeah, man, we're rocking with this Beyonce country album. Mm. But when it's time for R&B, um, you know, black music that we know you can do, mm. we need you back okay. to come do what you do. And she knows that. Mm. But nobody is boxing her from experimenting with different sounds. Mm. You know, that's that's natural. So there is no there is no fear in allowing oh, artists to explore. Who, who allow, listen, Burner Boy mm. at the beginning, including Whiskey, mm. these guys came at re, as reggae dancehall musicians. Mm. Pure fact and simple. A lot yeah. of people forget. Don't Burner Boy, yeah, who's this? Whiskey yeah. tease me, tease me, tease mm. me was a dancehall record. Mm. Burner Boy, up until now, still speaks. A lot of times in his music in Patois, yeah. he still talks like he's from the Caribbean. Mm. That's one of the reasons why he has a strong connection with Caribbean music, mm. you know. But still, now he can do other sounds. Yeah. Whiskey with the essence, that was a little bit of R&B. Mm. Alcohol or whatever, with, you know, with Joe, Joe Boy. Boy. They're different sounds. Look at... Um, Love One City mm. with, with CK. Yeah. They're different.
different sounds that you can experiment with. Mm. That's fine. Mm. But we know what the core sound is. Yeah, but then the experiment, uh, the experimentation is not a problem, but the yeah. bad mountain. Yes, that's the problem. So that's where education has to come into play. Okay. Because education now lets you know mm. that you are free to experiment with different sounds. Mm. You know, Made in Lagos by Whiskey had a lot of different sounds in it. Mm. You know, however... Afrobeats is still the umbrella mm. that you fall into as an artist because that's what that's the that's the vehicle that took you to the world. Mm. When you now seem to be bad mountain, you know, Whiskey went ahead and gave a long explanation, which ultimately made sense. But the headlines the day before mm. has already done. You know the bloggers, you know the media platform. Bro, we will let flirt. me tell you how powerful it was. Mm. Wiz was still tweeting when Shade Room had made it a headline. Mm. That's the danger of our power. Yeah. He was still, Wiz was still tweeting. Self-destruct. He was still on that tweet. Mm. And it was immediately headline news on Shade Room in America. Mm. The biggest urban platform yeah. in the world. Mm. That's the danger. Now, you're talking to our brothers and sisters in diaspora where they're just finally happy that they found something that can bring them back to the source. Yeah. And you're telling them that, nah, man, it ain't so. Yeah, yeah. That instantly starts to confuse a lot of people. Exactly. It confuses, you know, the fans. It confuses even the younger generation. Mm. And in some cases, you could lead other young entertainers to, to feel like they can get, people forget the hard work and the journey that the likes of Whiskey has put in. This yeah. is 14 years. Whenever he talks, and I say that a lot of times, that when you are a big musician mm. and you have worked as hard as possible, I, I say that to Tiwa and hear me too, you've earned the right to be able to say some things and have some conversations because we saw you digging in the ground mm. when there was nothing. However, with that much power, responsibility. also comes a little bit of grace and responsibility mm. knowing that something little that you say can be taken completely differently and used by a whole new generation to chart something else mm. like recently it it so happened in a time when i was thinking to myself how are we going to educate the young people about the heroes that passed mm. that have created a path that ultimately got us here. Because if you ask some young, for example, Nigerian musicians, Ghana does this well, and I'll, I'll talk about this. Okay. If you go to a Nigerian party or a Nigerian club, very rarely does the DJ play music from 2002 mm. or 2001. A lot of the young entertainers today, not only the fan base, mm. don't even know who the remedies are. Mm. Don't know about pop play. Don't know about Tony Tetula. Mm. Don't know about Plantation Boys. And if not Two-Face collaborating with a lot of people and still active, a lot of the young fans will not have the respect they're supposed to have for those generations and what they did. Mm. And a lot of responsibility falls on the table. Mm. Some of these DJs, because they just want to play what's hot now and what can get people excited. Mm. Flip it to the Ghanaian side. I went for the Ghanaian Independence Party yeah. in, in London. Shout out to Aquaba, Fifi, you know, Skeggs, Nori, the whole thing. Mm. And when I was in there, I just stopped for like 45 minutes and I was looking around. I'm seeing young people from the ages of like 21 to people in their 40s. And every old school Ghana song that dropped. Word for word. Oh my God. I can tell you. Oh my God. We know, we know, oh, we know. Man, no. I, had, I had goosebumps. Yes. I was in the crowd yeah. looking around and mm. thinking to myself, how did Nigeria fail the young generation of fans? Mm. How? Mm. These, a lot of the people that were in that room were born and raised in the UK. Gen Z's. But if you play anything mm. from 20 years ago, anything, you can sing it. They are singing it word for word. Do you know why? Mm. When you go to a Ghanaian party, it is part of the DNA of the DJ yes. to go back 20, 30 years and play some of the big records. It's mm. part of the culture. Mm. It's not even about, oh, they just want to play Kweku Killer now or they mm. want to play King Promise now. No, they're going to go back 
to um, you know, Amache Dede. Mm. They're going to go back. Yes. Kojo Antu, they're going to mm. go back. Yes. And that's where education starts from. Mm. When the young generation understand that these are the people that made hits, that mm. ultimately transformed and transitioned, high life transformed and transitioned to hip life. Mm. Hip life is part of now Afrobeats. That's what the likes of King Promise and Kamido and all Kidi and Kwame are enjoying today. Yeah. You have respect when you mention Kojo Antwi to a 21-year-old Ghanaian, whether born and raised in America or the UK, you're going to know what's up. Yeah. If you talk about Amachide, you're going to know yeah. what's up. Not only do you listen to them at home, mm. because your parents are definitely playing it, but when you go to a Ghanaian party, before they get to King Promise and Kamido, then they play. They go play that one. Yeah. But in the Nigerian circle, mm. that's not working. Okay. Let's talk about Afrobeat yes. um, and the Grammys. Yes. Uh, you 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 receive your fair share of <laughs> bashing and criticism. Um, criticism, sorry. Yeah, yeah, um, you yeah. made a statement yeah. saying, "Sir, um, they used the culture. Absolutely, they used the journal Afro. They used David O. Particular market. Yes, to enter into new markets Absolutely. to reach wider audience, and yes. they just damned us. Absolutely, you, are you sort of that? Session? I'm sticking to that a hundred percent. The statistics that came out after the Grammys. They are not was, leaving their neck. No, 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 okay. no. David O did for the Grammys and all those interviews and promo, they used him for marketing uh, purposes and uh, knowing fully well that as, as they do it, they were going to stab him in the heart after they've completely used and dumped him. Um, I was just about to post to say, this is over to the Eddies now. Listen. African artists, Afrobeat artists, y'all need to withdraw yourselves from, from, from submitting your music to the Grammys. Statistics, the statistics that came after the Grammy Awards mm. tells yes, that story. Yes, the numbers. Over all 34%. Time high. All time high. Yeah. They were on the biggest platform in Africa. Mm. Davido was available for Grammy interviews. Yes. He was available for Clive Davis interviews. Mm. He was available for United Masters performances. Mm. He was available for the Spotify event. He was available for everything. He wasn't unavailable. He wasn't unavailable. <laughs> okay. He was available yes. for every single platform and push mm. to promote the fact that Africa had a new category mm. At the Grammy Awards, mm. this young man did every single thing Same. that they will probably not get any other African to do ever again. Mm. I'll tell you, I'll say that because we we are le <laughs> we, we have learned from now. It. Yeah, they and it, this is the most followed man on Twitter. This yeah. is the most followed man on Instagram. Instagram yes. His Snapchat is crazy. So for everything he was doing, look at the numbers they were getting. Mm. Look at the visibility they got. Look at how invested we were. I said it a million times. The only reason I went to LA mm. was because of that African category that had some of my greats. Yeah. David and Berna and Olamide. That alone was a reason for me to get on a plane mm. and say, listen, I have to be there when either one of these guys was being celebrated. Burner Boy was nominated for four, four. awards. Yes. David O was nominated for three. Mm. And um, listen, you can't take anything away. I said from the minute the nominations came out, mm. I said, Tyler could be the banana skin. Mm. And the reason why I said that was, I was at the Afrobeast Festival in Berlin in mm. August when she was performing Water for the first time and everybody was just standing, just looking at her. Mm. A great performer. She was doing her thing, but nobody knew what the song was. Mm. And within 30 days, everybody, their mother and their child, they were singing Water. <laughs> then fast forward to four months after mm. when the New York Times Square ball was dropping and it had the most audience in America watching the New Year's coming. Tyler was performing water on American TV to maybe 40 or 50 million Americans. Mm. I'm like, come on, man. That like, you can't have that type of visibility mm. with such a brilliant song mm. and not be in the contention to pick a that. Especially because you were nominated. It's if like it was willed to happen. If, you were, if she wasn't nominated and mm. she had that type of visibility, you'll be like, oh, it was bad. Yeah. But she was in contention. She mm. was in the running. Mm. She had incredible opportunities. She had massive machines. Mm. And, you know, the record label, 
did their job. Mm. The record label, the job of a major record label when they have an opportunity to pick an international award mm. and have even more visibility for their entertainer mm. is to throw the whole book at it. Mm. Make sure that they do what's necessary mm. in promotion and handshaking mm. to ensure their artist won. Okay. And, and nobody can take that away from her. Mm. Whoever won that category deserved it. Mm. I just believe mm. that both David and Burner Boy with the 12 months prior to that, mm. globally and within African specific categories, mm. Deserved something. But then all these things happening, you see, in our quest to get the Afrobeat to the world. Yes. Then we have the culture appropriation. Yes. Then we have the culture vultures. Yes. So it comes with what we, on the, the path that we are so on. So that was why I kicked off and said, and I've been saying this for a while. Yeah. You know, the VGMAs has changed his name now. I think it's Tell. Tell itself. Tell itself. We have the Hedy's Awards, mm. you know, we have Trace Africa. That was why when Rema spoke at the Hedy's Award mm. in Atlanta, yeah. that speech went viral because yeah. it was speaking to our soul. Because mm. you can see even in Lagos or in Nigeria, the fans don't even trust the artists no more. They don't buy tickets no more. It, we own Afrobeats. You get me? Um but until this year, Afro Nation is coming to Nigeria. They say, but well, Afro Nation has been doing Portugal. Afro Nation has been doing Ghana. You know, but that shows that our utilities, I mean, our institutions are failing slowly and slowly and slowly, and it will affect us big time. So, um, this is our chance because we are not the first African genre to make it big. Reggae has done its own, you know? And there's a reason why we're doing what we're doing right now, but I'm not gonna lie, we're bigger than... We cannot go out to look for validation, validation. Mm. when they don't understand our culture, our music, our impact. Mm. There is nobody in this world that did not do the unavailable dance. Oh, yes. Even Rihanna said that was a number one record of 2023. Mm. And that was in itself was saying something. If you look at how, look at Burner Boy, for example, mm. and look at that album, look at the impact he's currently still making. Selling stadium everywhere. Stadiums. Yes. Not only in places where you would have expected. Germany, in, France, Oh, everywhere. I went to Germany yeah. at the airport. I've got family in Germany. I go every year mm. for at least 15 years. Mm. This is the first time they asked me at the airport, uh, what am I here to do? I said, I came for an Afrobeats concert. The immigration officer, a white German man, mm. said, oh, Burner Boy. Okay. You don't at, have to do introduction. At entrance. <laughs> yeah. That's when I said, nah. You so open the door. That's enough for me to, to, to get me in. Mm. But like you said, these are some of the things that now put us in a vulnerable position. Yeah. And that's why I believe that some of our artists are also doing everything to try to say, I'm not, mm. uh, you know. And it's not only an African thing. Mm. If you look into hip-hop as well, some of them have suffered that feat in the last four or five years. Okay. Where they've said, you know, every time we make our music, they just put us in the urban black category. You know, I'm making pop music. Mm. That's why some people had problems with Adele, mm. saying when she sings R&B, she still gets to go on the pop side. Mm. But if... Beyonce does pop music, they, they stick her in yeah. the R&B. So there's always that conversation, people wanting to get a global. But what I say to people is, listen, regardless, it got you here. Mm. We're doing stadiums now. Mm. The world wants to mess with us because of this term Afrobeat. The product that we have created. Nobody can box anybody in the corner. When Bernard does a reggae record, we know it's a reggae record. Mm. When Wiz does an R&B record, we know it is. Mm. But when you're doing Afrobeats, mm. say it is Afrobeats. Mm. Tell the world what it is, what benefits is brought to you. But before a lot of young generation artists and fans can miss their roads, then now we need to step up. And people like ourselves now have to start showcasing how we got here. Mm. Because if the young people don't know how we got here, they will say nobody did nothing for them. Mm. 
Nobody did nothing for you. So let's get back to Nigeria. Recently, yeah. I've been, you know, um, combing through the um, the Nigeria side of Twitter, yeah. where you have the old hairs yes. being interviewed. Yes. And they go like, we paved the way for this yes. uh, these new generation of artists. Yes. Then the new generation will come and say, you didn't do anything. Yes. It's like, I paved the way, you didn't do anything for yeah. me. Where do we, I mean, how can we reconcile, I mean, these two generations and make that. sure that there is harmony? Because I love that. however you want to see it, even if it was one record from an old head, they paved the way. Absolutely. Why are the new cats refusing to admit that some of these people paved the way for them? And there is back and forth. I think them. the first thing mm -hmm. is in how the questions are being put to some of the people that said nobody paved the way for them. Okay. I personally feel like those questions are being put in a way where mm. they're saying somebody paved the way for you, like they almost held your they, hand yeah. and helped you through mm. to get to where you are. Mm. And when they say that mm. to someone who feels like they mm. busted their ass themselves mm. and all the difficulties and challenges and mm. fences they had to get over to get to where they are, mm. and looking around when they were doing those struggles mm. and they really didn't see any OG face, mm assisting, maybe giving me a lawyer or telling me to how to manage my contract or whatever. Well, come on, OG, you didn't pave the way for me. Okay. However, in the real context of the conversation, saying that the OGs, their successes, their music, their, their, what they did mm. is why we're here. Okay. That is way paving. So there is, at the end of the day, there's a way paving. Of somewhere. course. Mm -hmm. I am a broadcaster today. Because I watched DJ Abbas, I watched Ayo Shunaya, I saw Femi Ben TV, I saw Ronke Pampa on television in mm. the UK. Mm. If I didn't see them, I would never have been inspired to be a broadcaster today. I can guarantee you 100%. Mm. Until today, even with all my experience on radio and television and everything, I still have conversations with DJ Abbas, with Ayo Shonaya, with, you know, Ronke Papa. Sometimes I still pick their brains on certain things because I believe that I am a direct descendant of their impacts. Mm. Ben Television is the first, you know, uh, cultural ethnic minority television in Europe. Mm. Not a black TV, ethnic minority in the entire Europe. So if us as blacks and Africans did not watch that television and see people like us presenting with African accents, with heritage from Ghana, Nigeria, Ghana, whatever it is, how would I have been inspired to do what I'm doing? Mm. It goes back to the music by the OGs. Mm. If there was no Two-Face, Two-Face, I said to somebody, in my entire time in the UK, mm. African Queen was the first song I heard Oyibo people playing on the streets of London. Mm. And I know how my heart leapt. Mm. Well, they listened to her songs, they're singing it. Before we came to Love One Titi, there was a song that transcended cultures. African Queen was an African-American movie. It was played in Jamaica. It was played in Trinidad and Tobago. That was a record that broke boundaries. Mm. That's way paving. Mm. No other way you want to call it. Yes, we can. Yes, we can speak to individual people's stories, but we can talk generally that the OGs, what they did, the music they created, the way the paths that they charted mm. is what led us here. Mm. If we were not doing Independence Day parties, bringing Nigerians together, bringing Ghanaians, Kenyans together, mm. we probably will not have. That's how we used to bring artists to come and perform. Mm. At the beginning. Mm. That's how we now go to the concerts at the Indigo 2. At the, it's way paving. Mm. Without the Indigo 2, the Coco Concert, Hip Life Festival, we would never have been able to get the Whiskids and go into HMV and into Indigo 2. It's way paving. So there's nothing wrong with there's nothing, admitting that. No, there's yes. nothing wrong. Yes. And we need to But just, why, why do you think it's so hard for some of them to admit? Because... It is what it is. It's, you have been inspired one way or the other. Absolutely. Just giving them their flowers mm. whilst they are alive. Not be say them die finish that yeah. with the come talk say this one inspired. Uh, yeah. And it is yeah. so hard for some of them to like, it's like their ego, man. I don't yeah. get it. I think it's number one, there's personal stories and personal okay. ego there. Mm. But there's also an element of social media fan baiting, mm. media baiting mm. that almost forces you to take 
a rogue stance that yeah. ain't nobody helped me yeah. because you've got people behind you that's going to say yeah mm. nobody helped you mm. now only us they are our part by ourselves uh, we now <laughs> do on our road we now construct on our people road we now break on our doors see, so mm. when you have that mm. it allows that type of conversation to happen but I know mm. in the heart of hearts they know. people were inspired by other people mm. you know I know people have always mentioned mm. Bernard Boy saying it's in the past and stuff mm. but I've seen Recently, I posted a video with Burner Boy and mm. Vector almost 10, 12, 13 years ago. I see Burner Boy with Timaya. Mm. I see Burner Boy with Jimmy Jat and Two Face Dibia. Mm. I know what he is like mm. with these people. And I know that when you're talking to him about these people, there's always a way he talks about them that shows nothing but respect mm. and humility the to them. The problem is the fan base. Is how the fan base twists it mm. and how sections of the media want to force you to accept that no you must accept that somebody helped you okay. if they didn't help you then you will not be here okay. it's not it's that not like that paving way is somebody inspired you mm. whether consciously or, or subconsciously mm. Mm. if mm. you didn't see that even fella in itself is an inspiration to everybody mm. all the things that we think we're doing today he did it Sonia Day was performing in arenas in the 80s and 70s. Mm. These men were being driven by chauffeurs in New York and London. They were hanging out with Paul McCartney and everybody. Mm. So we have seen levels of superstardom in the past that even till now we haven't achieved yet. Mm. Because Fela and then Paul McCartney at the height of Beatles mm. were friends that was public. Public, oh, no mm. be private friendship. Oh. Yeah. Paul McCartney used to say it. Yes. So come on, man. Like we just need to, I think the fans need to relax. Mm. And I think when media personalities and the media are speaking to some of these artists, mm. sometimes we also need to play to the sensitivity of the individual. Okay. We need to, there's some people that you have to play to that sensitivity. You have to always look at how you ask certain type of questions and don't make it seem like you're looking for a gotcha moment mm. that's going to go viral. Mm. And that's usually what's been done. Why is it led to that? Heavies, uh, they come Niger. Yes. Uh, what, what is your take on that? They are finally coming back Facts. home after the Atlanta debacles yes. and everything. Yes. They are bringing it back. Yes. And so for presentation yes. purposes, we have, we have award schemes in this country where oh, this artist has won artist of the year yes. and he's nowhere to be found. Yes. Maybe a rep will come and take yes. and go. Yes. Some of these things, they contribute to, you know, low patronage of some of these hours. And I'm sure that is one of the reasons why they took 1, it over there. 1,000%. Now that it is coming home, ours created yes. by someone who yes. is part of us. Yes. What are we supposed to do to make sure, sir, the headies have that kind of representation and credibility? Absolutely. Listen, when the whole... Grammy thing was happening and we were making noise and, you know, because the Grammys, I don't know if you knew, mm. they were about to, to announce a Grammy Africa thing. Mm. So when that whole noise was happening and the way we were making noise, obviously they had this conversation. I had a conversation with Mr. Ayuani Mashaun mm. and we talked about it. I think the first thing that needs to happen is the entertainers have to feel confident that the award platform is credible. Credible, okay. So you have to gain the confidence and trust mm. of entertainers mm. and record labels that this award is a credible platform mm. and the path which they choose their winners is also a credible path which the award, the artists and the record labels can be a part of. Mm. Once you do that, and then make sure that you engage all these... Stakeholders. It's a job on its own. Yes. When you do that, don't just think that the award organization is bigger than everybody else. Everybody deserves to be treated with respect, especially when you're judging their craft okay. and their art. Mm. If the organization takes its time mm. to do their due diligence in convincing the stakeholders, the mm. artists, the creatives, the record labels, that this platform is credible, the process is credible and can be vetted, mm. and the reasons why you have to be a part of it mm. is to empower this platform to be able to empower you as well, mm. I'm sure people will start turning up and people will show more respect because where we're going mm. for respect, they're not going to give you us there. They don't, they will not choose us over. Yeah, people. It is impossible. Yeah. I don't care what you're making. Mm. I don't care how big you are. How many, CK just sold 
8 million copies of Love Wants It is about to hit 10 million. Mm. A diamond selling Afrobeats, African pop record, first of this generation. Mm. We've had in the past, but this is the first one. Mm. Still, it is within our culture here that we'll be able to celebrate it. Because yeah. in that place, there are millions of diamonds yes. of records. Yes. So there's nothing new to them. Mm. So we also have to let the artists know that in no way like home can understand the impact you're making, mm. the quality of your music, mm. the successes of your music, mm. and give you the proper celebration that you deserve. Mm. You, It's okay to go elsewhere. If you're being invited to be a part of it, use it as an opportunity to promote us and promote our culture. Mm. We saw what David O.D. at the B BET Awards yeah. years ago, yeah. at the Mobile Awards years ago, standing on, on television and telling them to show up. Mm. That's what we need to be using those platforms for. Mm. But back home, is really where the credibility is. New songs, um, um, Portable Skepta. <laughs> have you the Tyler uh, Tyler self titled yes. album? I mean, what is your take on this? Portable song? Skepta mm -hmm. is is a groundbreaking record. Mm. Skepta is one of the greatest musicians to come out of the UK. When we're talking about but that collaboration, man, I mean, it is that not... <laughs> shows the importance and the intelligence of Skepta. Yeah, yeah. Deciding that, listen, man, we're gonna let me just lift a brother up from the streets. Mm. And and Tyler, I've listened to the album. Mm. Really dope records there. One instantly jumped to me, and I think the title is Jump, actually, okay. or something like that. Mm. She's she's a brilliant singer. She's a fantastic performer. She's mm. an ambassador from Africa, mm. and we have to show nothing but love and respect to any, especially a young lady mm. that's playing in the big pond mm. with these many monsters. Mm. Omale is, is, is ah no 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 Omale is the <laughs> Omale for me is 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 a different kettle of fish yeah. and this brother is just got me into his own zone mm. and the world is about to see another Afrobeat superstar take over the world mm. trust me this guy has found his place mm. his fan base are comfortable with the way it mm. is and they are about to follow him to the hills um, uh, Ru um, Ruges uh, former record label yes. he left and they have introduced new arts yep. like uh, Baguetta Baguetti yeah, Baguette, Glorious sorry. Boy yeah. you know The mm. Giza um, The Prince is an incredible a &R. Mm. he has eyes and ears yeah. to spot new talent like we haven't seen in the past. Yeah. Look at what he's produced, mm. Rema and Ruga. And uh, I think there's a great future for that record label and mm. some of the fantastic talent. Baguetti is an amazing singer mm. and she's going to dominate the world. And, and listen, Ruga is still Ruga. Yes. And Ruga... He has his own record label now. Yes. Mm. And Ruga will still shake the pond mm. because he's a unique talent mm. that the world is still, still yet to see the best of. Mm. And uh, Medical's O2 <sighs> concert, you have to comment on that. Medical yes. is a different ambassador from Ghana. Yes. I think when I saw his stage performance in December when he had the whole GTA thing. Yes. I've never seen anything like that before. I'm not sure if anybody has, yeah. but I've never seen anything like that in the whole world. Not even them Travis Scott mm. have done it to that point. So we have to give him a shout out. And what he's doing with stepping into the Indigo 2 this year, mm. he's also breaking the mold and trying to pave the way mm. for young artists that haven't taken that risk to Risk. invest in themselves Risk. and take their brand to a different level. That's what he's doing. Mm. And when he wins in May, mm. there will be a new generation of young Ghanaian musicians mm. that will be ready to take the risk just because mm. Medical did it by himself. That's what paving the way is. Mm. 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 Simple. Mm. So in the future, when other young people decide that I'm not going to wait for a promoter to book me, mm. I'm going to take my hard and cities from Ghana mm. to go and showcase my talent in foreign lands. Mm. You will tell young artists that you can do it too. Mm. Don't sit and wait for the promoter. If you want to go and speak to your fans and people are not talking the right numbers and I've got the money here in Ghana, mm. let me go and do it. Mm. A lot of people haven't done that before. Yeah. It's only a few. But now he's also charting a new course mm. that will inspire an ent entire generation. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, if me then a uh, shops to do on calf conversation, we go do like <laughs> six hours because a lot of things they are my oh I, I yeah. made sure I brought one Ener energy uh, god you understand. for you. This is this is this is the reason why your man <laughs> has been speaking for almost an hour <laughs> and he's let me try. <laughs> yeah, try it, bro. Yes. I brought that for you. Energy God. Straight away. What's, what's your energy like now? We are going to do another two hours. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you be bored yet? Yeah. Maybe you need some. But yes, make we just wrap up because yes, yes we, if we want to talk, we go talk. But then yeah. right now, looking at where Afrobeat is heading towards, yes. the new crop of artists coming in, um, how we are trying to, you know, be up there, be part of the conversation and be relevant for a very long time. Yes. What does the future have? Or, you know, half Afrobeat, let me put it that way. We need to ensure that we go back to the essence of African music, yeah. African pop music. Mm. We have to celebrate high life mm. a lot more. Mm. We have to bring African instrumentation into our music because mm. we're making so many songs that sound R&B-ish mm. and pop and stuff, which is palatable to the international ear. Mm. Mm. We also need to remember that the essence and the source mm. is African sounds. Mm. When we lose that, we lose our path. Mm. We need to start coming back to that and sampling a lot more original sounds mm. for African music. And if we do that, we just you know they look at where we are now yeah. in Asia. Mm. Rema, CK, a lot of people forget to say that mm. India has now become the second highest streaming nation in the world yeah. and about to overtake the United States of America, mm. which means they are There's going to market. Be, and also means that investment in the music business is going to be going to India now to bring back. Mm the pop sounds that India had back in the early 2000s, which means all this enjoyment we're having with Afrobeats. Mm. If we don't really fix our structure, mm. fix our sound, mm. return back to the source and bring everybody together. There's going to be a problem. There's going to be a problem. Mm. Anyway, Ghana, you have always been one, that yeah. one person who is always preaching col uh, collaboration. Right? Facts. Looking at what Stoneboy and uh, Stoneboy brought out, uh, Ogmodu. At the stadium, That's all African crazy. game. Crazy. That's crazy, bro. You are always preaching collaboration. It's, Odumodu mm -hmm. will continue to benefit from that performance for the next 10 years, mm. as long as he continues to make music. Yeah. He performed in front of thousands, tens mm. of thousands of people mm. in Ghana yeah. with one of the biggest musicians from Africa. Yeah. That collaboration alone and that visibility, mm. you will reap the fruits. And that's what I talk about, collaboration. Yeah. Partnerships. And the more we see of those the better we will be, not only in Nigerian artists or other African artists being promoted in countries like Ghana, mm. but also Ghanaian artists also enjoying benefits. Look at the little video they did yeah. in the car where Odumodu says, yeah, 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 yeah. if Nigeria we, leaves, then, then, you do back up, that yeah. went viral, viral around everywhere. the world and mm. made every Nigerian mm. and Ghanaian happy. You win. If you win, you go come, follow me, go my yeah, England. Yeah. England, you go to do backup singer for me if we win. Jesus if, Christ, if now I'm going to tire me. <laughs> We saw Duncan Mighty in the studio yes. with Stoneboy. Yes. That again mm. is what we want to see. We need to see a lot more cross collaborations and joint projects mm. between our Ghanaian and Nigerian brothers. And finally, I just wanted to say I know the conversation about Play Ghana yes. was heavy in December. Play Ghana. You, you have to say something about it. Listen, that. bro, mm -hmm. it's very, very. I, I don't think there's anything negative about it. Okay. I've been around in Ghana. Yes. And when I go out, sometimes, a lot of times, it's, you know, they're playing a lot of my piano sounds. Mm. But what I really want to hear when I'm here is what are the sounds in Ghana? Ghana. Who are the musicians that are doing something? Up, yeah. So if you don't think about your country music first, mm. when people, you're enjoying so much from tourism, mm. when we live here, we're taking our piano and Nigerian musicians. Mm. But when we come to Ghana, we really should be introduced to Ghanaian music mm. and Ghanaian superstars. So ladies and gentlemen, um, I just will pay the support play Ghana. Facts. It is not a calculated attempt to sideline no. any country's music. Nah. I don't think that is the case. Nah. Because they still play Ghana, uh, Nigerian music, South African music. But we are just saying, say, let us play more, more of Ghana music. Yes. That is all we That's are saying. It. Shops, uh, shops do. Thank you, brother. Thanks for coming through. You see this interview, Angasande. We are going to get like a million views on this <laughs> one because the last, the last one, a lot of people enjoyed the conversation. Yes. And um, I'm always glad doing this with you. Same here, bro. When I come over there, maybe I have to sit with you again, again. Again, again. There's always. He, he, no, you know where when you enter his studio, the kind of energy he will give you, uh, you nah, you would understand. But to us again, thanks for coming. We Thank appreciate you very your much, time. Man. I hope so. You have fun in Ghana. Will do. Yes, but the the birthday. You just cool down. Don't don't watch. Don't do too much. Yes, don't do too nah, much. We ain't gonna do too much. We man. want to see you doing this thing for a long time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, subscribe to the channel. Oh yes, and this is this is not available in Ghana. Yeah, but it's gonna be soon. Okay. But you can go to the energygod.com okay. website and you can definitely place some orders. So for those in the UK. Be, 
Europe, okay. everywhere. If you order, it's going to come through. And we're mm. going to open a platform on, on, on Instagram as well. So okay. people can order from back home. He's a businessman, you see. Every, he have, has, he I'm has, like you. Yeah. I'm, in, listen, I'm in the headquarters right here. This is the media headquarters. <laughs> and I'm proud of you, Charles bro. is always cooking. Bro. But, but how do you do it, though? Like... Do you do you have do you rest, bro? I, the fun the good because thing I want is, to know how you do it. You can't be moving like so that. So the good thing is I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do. So mm. my recovery time is a lot quicker than a lot of people. Okay, and that's the blessing. I go to the gym a lot. Mm. I'm fit, so that's how. Okay. And I'm just excited about the culture. I'm okay. excited. I was yeah. You're always to come, excited too. I'm excited to come see you. Mm. I'm excited about what you're doing. Mm. You're a young man, but you're still an inspiration to people like myself. Mm. You're still paving the way, appreciate, bro. Appreciate. <laughs> Please, appreciate. let's be very happy mm. in giving credits mm. and be able to say it with a warm heart. Mm. You are paving the way. This amazing studio, mm. your platform is incredible, creating so many opportunities for so many people. Mm. That's what we all want to be doing. Mm. So you're showing us how to do it mm. and you're paving the way. More power to you, brother. Thank you. Thanks for the kind words. And I really do appreciate this. And for the inspiration thing, I don't have to say much. I've been watching you. I've been paying attention. I've been seeing how you are documenting everything. We do come to your platform more times for Nigeria content. You are a thought leader. You are an inspirational figure. And we are glad that you are doing this thing because in the next 20 years, we are going to point our fingers to, okay, this was the man that stood up and documented the the, the journey of Afrobeat. May God bless you. Brother. And yes, thanks for linking up with me. Thank you, bro. My name is Kojo Sheldon. Oh, he has a YouTube channel too. Yep. Yes, he, he he is like you know a, he's a content creator. He does everything, every <laughs> single thing, every content that you want. And I recently I've seen that you are accepting collaborations from a lot of. I'm just inspiring like, the young people. I'm I'm just, I see like this a was, lot of people. Yeah. I, if I love content yeah. that you're making, I tell you to collaborate with me. Like, crazy. Just create it. Let me share it to the rest of the world mm. as well. Let me use my platform. And it's not Nigeria. I've seen Ghanaian, yeah, Ghanaian content platform. being shared yeah, 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 yeah. on the platform. Because I'm a, I'm a fan. So it's not it's not a war, bro. No. no, no we are not fighting. We move bet, we move farther <laughs> yeah. when we move together. Mm, 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 mm. Simple. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Koji Sheldon. This has been Convo with the Head, with the Energy God, the Afrobeat CNN. Shops to do. We out. We out. <laughs>